Today, as part of our transformations unit, we're going to talk about rotations. Rotations. And to review some of our transformations, we have a translation, which is a slide. We have a reflection that's a flip. And we have a rotation that is a turn. And today, our main focus will be on the rotation or turn. So this would be the key concepts for definition of rotations, and I would put these into your notes. A rotation or turn is a transformation in which a figure is rotated about a point called the center of rotation. The number of degrees a figure rotates is the angle of rotation, and in a rotation, the original figure and its image are congruent. So if we look at the diagram, we have a center of rotation, the point we're turning it around. We have our original, and then after our turn, we have our image, and this is called the angle of rotation. And this is an example, actually, of a 90-degree rotation clockwise. Clockwise would be turning like the clock. If you look at the second hand, or actually any hand of the clock, it spins... Go back and do that again. It spins in this direction. Clockwise. It spins like the clock. And the opposite way, anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, is going to spin in the opposite direction of the clock. Clockwise like the clock. Anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, the opposite direction of the clock. And we would refer to that as orientation. So the orientation refers to the order of the parts as you move around the object in a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction. So our angle of rotation, clockwise turn of 90 degrees from the pink trapezoid to the blue trapezoid. And we want to notice how both shapes remain congruent, same size and shape. So with rotations, with reflections, with translations, our original and our image are still congruent. They are still the same size and shape. So this one we're showing a 90 degree turn clockwise. We could turn it one more time would be 180 degrees. And a third time would be to 170 degrees. So we could rotate this triangle. If we just rotated it around that point, notice how this line is horizontal is now vertical. This vertical line after the 90 degree rotation is now horizontal around this center of rotation. What direction did the object rotate from pink to blue? If I look at the pink arrow to the blue arrow, it looks like it turned from here to here. I would say it is a counterclockwise turn of 90 degrees. All right, identify the transformations. Tell whether each transformation appears to be a rotation. Explain. All right, so let's look at this one on the left. From the pink to the blue or blue to pink, this one does not look like a rotation. This appears just to be a flip or a reflection over some line of reflection drawn here in the center. This one from pink to blue or blue to pink looks to be turning around the specific point here, so this is an example of a rotation. Yes, rotation. Now, for your turn, you want to tell whether each transformation appears to be a rotation and explain. So I want you guys to draw both of these in your notes and then pause the video here and identify do we have a translation, a rotation, or a reflection. All right, welcome back, and tell whether each transformation appears to be a rotation. This one from blue to pink or pink to blue is a translation. It's just a slide. And this one from pink to blue or from blue to pink is a rotation, appears to be rotating around this point. So to rotate around a given point, let's say we're given this triangle, and we could rotate the shape around the point of rotation. And it could be the origin or it could be another point. It doesn't always have to be the origin. It could be any point we're given. And in this case, we're going to take the triangle, rotate it once would be 90 degrees. One turn from here to here is 90 degrees. We can rotate it again, 180 degrees. 
or a third turn to 270. 360 would bring it back to the original spot. All right, so I want you guys to stand up. Stand up right here, and I want the, you to face the clock in your room. All right, everybody's standing up. Now, I want you to rotate clockwise 180 degrees. Rotate clockwise 180 degrees. So now, you should be facing the opposite way of the clock. Your back should be to the clock. All right, now turn counterclockwise 180 degrees from where you were at. If you turn counterclockwise, we're turning the opposite direction, and you're back to facing the clock. How about rotate clockwise 360 degrees? Try that. All right, that should have spun you to the right, all the way back to where you were started. All right, you guys can have a seat. Great job with that. Thank you for participating. So let's rotate from a given point. So let's say we're given this rectangle and we rotate, want to rotate around this point at 2, 2. We're going to turn one time. So notice how this vertical line becomes horizontal. The horizontal line flips to vertical and we're at our new position after a 90 degree rotation. And let's say we're asked to name the ordered pair of the vertices of the image. Well, the image is the red rectangle, and we want to get the ordered pair for each of the corners. So this ordered pair, first number is left or right, second number is up or down, so we're at 3, 0. This corner is at 5, 0. Then we have 3, negative 3 is this corner, and the last corner would be at 5, negative 3. So we could name the ordered pairs of each of the vertices of the image. Now, does rotating a figure change its size? Does rotating a figure change its size? No, it's still congruent. It's still the exact same size and shape. So remember, rotating, translating, reflecting, you still remain congruency. You have not changed the shape or size. Um, we won't change shape or size until we start talking about dilation. Dilation will be an enlargement or a reduction. That will change size. But a rotation, a reflection, or a translation, you keep the same size. The size part doesn't change. So hopefully that will help you get started on rotating figures using rotations and degree and the point. Have a great day. O-U-T spells out.